Did I just get into a minor escalated Twitter fight with Taz? God, I'm just asking to be choked out. Hello everybody, welcome to the video. That's right, we're going to review the September 5th edition of Raw. Is war? No, no, it's, it's, it's just called Raw, right? There's there's no war, there's no war zone anymore. It's just, oh wait, no, no, no. It's the Kevin Owens show because he won the title and he came out and people were chanting, you deserve it. And he did a good heel promo on it. And then Seth Rollins came out and he was like, hey, I'm the face now. Now, the Kansas City crowd is the first thing I want to point out about this Raw because live crowds, lively crowds, good crowds, whether they boo Roman Reigns or cheer for him or boo the heels or cheer for the faces, whatever, it doesn't matter. A good, lively crowd in the right arena just makes everything better. It's kind of like Rock vs. Hogan at WrestleMania 18. That match was okay, but the crowd, I mean, just brought it to a whole new level i mean that's really what it's all about right it's about getting your crowd to pop getting the audience behind you you know eliciting emotional responses as they say putting smiles on people's faces i just want to say the first thing i need to point out is that chris jericho still got it he, he's still so good i mean he's been so subtle over his wrestling career that people just like forget how good he actually is. I mean, is he the most athletic wrestler to ever be? No, he's never been an AJ Styles or a Lucha guy. Is he the most beefiest wrestler? No, he's never been a Triple H or anything like that. Is he the most outspoken wrestler? No, I mean, yeah, he's got good promos. He's got good wrestling technique. He's got good psychology. You know, he's got a good look. I mean, Chris Jericho is like... If you were to like to put him on a trading card, everything that was, you know, an attribute to a WWE wrestler or superstar, um, he's like a seven all the way down the board and it comes out to a higher consistent level because that crowd was ready to do what they wanted to do. I mean, that crowd is an independent, fiery Midwest wrestling crowd. Kansas City is a hot wrestling town. It always has been. Home of Randy Orton, home of Harley Race. I mean, there's it's a hotbed for Kansas City. And in the beginning of that match, Rollins versus Jericho, the crowd was like, eh, so-so between both guys. They, they knew Rollins was supposed to be the face. They knew Jericho was supposed to be the heel. But slowly as the match went on Jericho worked his fucking magic and they were booing him out of the building and going ape shit over Seth Rollins now I know what you're thinking well yeah Rollins was the face of course they get no 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 you gotta remember Rollins official face turn happened 45 minutes before that in the typical raw opening segment that's when he came out and decreed that he was a face because he was going to take down the authority figures of like Stephanie and whatever and he was going to go after the heel champion. He did not get his usual heel brash self. Yes, he can still be fiery when he wrestles and still be aggressive and mean when he's a heel and he can do that as a baby face. In fact, that makes for a good baby face, I think. As an aggressive baby face, you know, that whole gray area is, you know, he's not going to be your typical white meat baby face. But that match was amazing because you have to remember from the opening of that show to Seth Rollins declaring he was pretty much a baby face through his promo and attacking Kevin Owens to that match with Chris Jericho. He solidified being the top heel over the last two years in the company to being one of the top faces. He did that all in the span of 45 minutes thanks to Chris Jericho. Now, if that's not the gift of Jericho, I don't know what is, so let's just take a moment and drink it in. No, 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 no. I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to be that guy that uses catchphrases on a stupid little podcast fuck that okay count number two i i actually wasn't going to keep mentioning this but obviously guys there's a problem on raw and it's only escalating and that problem is squash matches the use of jobbers it's bullshit why are we having squash matches on raw it's not 1975 anymore. What is it accomplishing? Now, Bo Dallas has fucking squash matches? Okay, so we have Braun Strowman doing squash matches because, oh, they're reinventing his character. Um, as far as I can remember, his character was always a big, unstoppable, strong monster. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Nia Jax. Oh, we have to establish her dominance. Um, 
You don't do that by having her go against nobody jobbers. And yeah, maybe you can get like a jobber to like do kind of good against her. But at the end of the day, it's just a no name jobber. And Bo Dallas going against jobbers too. It's it's complete absolute bullshit. If you want to make a good Nia Jax character, how about turn her into a face? How about turn her into the poster child for every woman that does look different? Or at least use that more as far as her storyline. Not this, oh, she's unstoppable. But how about she's tired of getting picked on and bullied her whole life. So she's proving that it doesn't matter what you look like. You can still be large. You can still be athletic. And you can still dominate. Bo Dallas, I, 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 I don't even fucking care anymore what they do with him. I really don't. Um, once again, they just out of the out of the blue are going to try and change his character or something. Obviously, I see it heading to a feud with Backlin and Darren Young, but whatever. But the thing is with these job matches is they take up time on the program. So does Raw really need to be three hours long when they can condense it to two if they just got rid of some of these segments, such as, I don't know, 25 minutes worth of squash matches? You're, you're, you're getting squash matches that don't lead to pay-per-view matches. They're not leading anywhere. It's been two months now, and we're still getting these squash matches. We're getting the same old crap. It's like, just get rid of it. But at the same time, we're not seeing prevalent people like we should, such as Roman Reigns, such as Rusev. Say what you want about them, but aren't they more prevalent to the show than some jobber getting television time? I mean, I've wrestled in WWF a couple times, and yeah, I never got my television squash match, but honestly, if you talked to me back then and they were doing televised squash matches back then, if you asked me back then to come on television as, a, as an indie guy to get squashed, one, I don't have the body to be squashed. You know, I'm six foot two. I was 250 pounds. I'm like fucking Ryback. So I'm not squashable. I'm not a cruiserweight. But if they did that, I, I wouldn't take it. Because it amounts to nothing. It doesn't add anything into your portfolio as a person. You can't. I can't go back to AWA Wisconsin. I can't go back to NWA Wisconsin. I can't go back to Bruce City and be like, Hey guys, I was on TV. Oh yeah, you got squashed. So even as an indie guy, we don't give a shit about you anymore. You've lost what little star power you had. So yeah, count number two is get rid of the squash segments and... Give us something else. I don't care. Give us a talk show segment. Get us longer promos. Give us more New Day, Rusev, whatever. Seriously, get rid of these fucking squashes. If you follow social media, WWE can see that the gist of these squash matches are getting negatively received by the audience. Overwhelming. I'd say 99.99% of the, at least the social media audience, which is the best way I can calculate it on Facebook, Twitter, and whatever, on YouTube, all the comments and whatever. And trust me, I read hundreds and thousands of them to really get the gist of what the audience is thinking. And they're not liking it. It's because it's proving nothing. And if anything, squashes have always proved to be the same problem. Is you're trying to mask a person who can't wrestle as a wrestler. And when they actually get tested into matches that go 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, they can't fucking deliver and they, they, they burn out. There, there's nothing that can be done with them. I mean, where is Nia Jax and Braun Strowman going to be a year from now? Maybe wrestling each other at WrestleMania. Who knows? But if you look at the who's who's of squashers, you look at all the way back from people like the Ultimate Warrior. Turns out he couldn't fucking wrestle. Goldberg. He was not ready to actually have wrestling matches. He fucked up so much shit. He was a great athlete, but, you know, he wasn't a wrestler because he just got thrown in the squashes. He never actually learned how to wrestle. He never had to learn. You look at Ryback. Ryback, I think Ryback was probably a good character and probably could have been more, but WWE was obviously not going to utilize him past the, just being the steroid guy. So, basically, squashes display the fact that in the future when it comes time for the fans to want more from you to put on a match you can't deliver and for the final three count i just gotta say it yep Corey graves mentioned on commentary may young giving birth to a hand i'll leave you with that <laughs>